as the offering is continuing to be collected and it will be brought forth when it's finished. But let's move on as we join together and sing, Beautiful One. Oh, sorry. the congregation stand for prayer again why is it that we stand it's a tradition but it's a tradition that shows respect to the one to whom we address our prayers our first prayer we have three prayer requests that all deal with the difficulties of of health and disease and and injury and so on first of all Sharon Snyder asks that we pray for a young man named Joe Harris He's suffering from mental health issues and is currently at Intermountain Hospital. Needless to say, we want to pray for Joe and also his family. We also, Delilah Byers, asked that we pray for her mother-in-law, Jenny. Uh, you, we, she regularly worships with us. Uh, she fell and broke her pelvis. And uh, 
needless, she is in hospital, she is recovering, and things seem to be going well, but that's, that's always a difficult time. And also then we ask, uh, Judy Trask asked that we would pray for a Linda Cummings, and uh, she's a co-worker and has recently been diagnosed with lung and liver cancer. So likewise, we also want to pray for her family and for her as well. So let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you created this world to be perfect, for life to be wonderful without pain and without difficulty and without death. But Lord, in the fall of mankind, with sin came suffering, disease, and physical death. Dear Lord, all these difficulties of mind and body sometimes feel overwhelming. Dear Lord, it is in You and in You alone that we are able to look with hope and trust in Your promises as we deal with these situations. Dear Lord, we ask that You would watch over Linda and her family, Jenny and her loved ones, and also Joe and his family. Dear Lord, help those individuals to hear Your promises, to trust in Your love, and to find strength and hope even in the darkest hour of despair. Dear Lord, we also ask that You would use us as Your servants in this world to pray for these individuals, to help these individuals, and to witness the truth of Your love to them so that they too may find the comfort, hope, and peace that we have as we deal with our challenges in life. We pray this always in Jesus' name. Amen. We also have prayers giving thanks for obvious situations of joy. Um, Hannah asked that we would pray for her dad, Josh, who is having his birthday. She didn't write down exactly when or how old he is, but uh, we will just, we'll just wish him a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Josh. And then also a prayer request uh, on behalf of Truth and Love Ministry. Uh, thanks to God, and you heard this in Bible study, but uh, thanks to God for over 1,300 opportunities, conversations of witnessing the gospel during their re recent outreach campaign down in Utah. So let's turn to the Lord and give Him thanks for these gifts. Dear Lord, we give You thanks always for the gift of life. With every age of our life, with every year of our experience, we grow in wisdom and we grow in our ability to help one another. Dear Lord, we ask also and we give you thanks especially for the birthday of Josh as he continues to grow as a Christian man, husband and father. Lord, we also give you thanks for the gift of life that we all celebrate each and every day. And we humbly ask that with our years of experience, with the wisdom that comes from experiences of life, we may also grow in maturity and strength of the Holy Spirit as each and every day we seize the opportunity to grow in Your Word and to minister to others with Your Word. We give You thanks for the opportunities that the volunteers with Tilm have experienced this past week. Obviously, we give You thanks for the witness that was shared on that day but we pray that your Holy Spirit through that witness and other witnesses like it would continue to grow a faith in the hearts of those who have now come to know you as the true Savior of the world, who have come to appreciate the gift of holiness and perfection given freely, purchased through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. The congregation may be seated. At this time, I invite Pastor John Steinbrenner to come forward to celebrate the installation of Pastor Fry. I see the youngsters of the Kids Church are with us. Um, I'd ask that the youngsters of the Kids Church, if they could come on up in front and have a seat, they'll be singing at the end of the service. So we're going to spend a few minutes of transition. So have the youngsters of the Church come up and fill the front hymn front, not hymnals, pews, and then we'll move on with the installation.
to you, the members of Messiah, family, friends, and to you, Pastor Edward Fry, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said to his church, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Holy Scripture assures us that our risen and ascended Lord will always provide the church with the necessary gifts to carry out this commission. The Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesians, quote, He who has ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up. Dear brother in Christ, this congregation has called you to serve in the office of the Holy Ministry. It is good that we all hear again what God in his Holy Word impresses on his pastors concerning this sacred office. St. Paul states that a pastor, quote, must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. He urges Timothy, quote, set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith and in purity. He further advises him, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. In the final chapter of his second letter to Timothy, the apostle gives additional words of encouragement. Preach the word, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist. The ability to carry out, carry out this calling is not in us, but comes alone from God. As St. Paul reminds the Christians in Corinth, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. So to you, Pastor Fry. In keeping with the word and the will of the Lord, you are about to be installed as a pastor at Messiah Lutheran Church. I ask you in the presence of God and of this congregation, are you fully determined to carry out this work according to the grace which God will give? I am. Do you believe that the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments are the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? I do. Do you accept the three ecumenical creeds, the Apostles, Nicene, and Athanasian, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures, and do you reject all the errors which they condemn? I do. Do you believe that the unaltered Augsburg Confession is a true exposition of the Word of God and a correct presentation of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and that the other confessional books in the Book of Concord are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith, the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, and the formula of Concord? I do. Do you solemnly promise that all your teaching and your administration of the sacraments will conform to the Holy Scriptures and the Lutheran Confessions? I do. Will you give faithful witness to Christ in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do and say? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Brothers and sisters who are members of Messiah Lutheran Church, in Christ you have heard the solemn promise given you by the one you have called to be your pastor. I urge you, therefore, to receive him as your pastor and to keep in mind always what the Word of God expects of you as members of his loved flock. Listen eagerly to the preaching of the word, receiving it not as the word of men, 
but as it actually is, the Word of God. Take to heart his scriptural words of warning and encouragement, humbly accepting the word planted in you. Work together with him for our Lord's kingdom, so that by your works of service the body of Christ might be built up. Help him by your word and example in teaching the young, remembering how the scriptures urge you to bring up your children in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Honor and love him, as the Apostle Paul says, Respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Pray for him continually, that his ministry among you may be greatly blessed, and that, with all of his responsibilities, he may continue to have a cheerful spirit. Provide also for his physical needs, for the Lord says... The worker deserves his wages, and the Apostle Paul says, anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor, with his instructor, excuse me. Finally, remember what the scriptures say. Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy and not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. Your promises then, members of Messiah, I ask you now in the presence of God, are you willing to receive your pastor as a minister of God? Will you show him the love, honor, and obedience in the Lord, which you owe to a shepherd and overseer placed over you by the Lord Jesus Christ, the chief shepherd and overseer of souls? If so, answer, we will, and ask God to help us. We will. The Almighty and merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Pastor Edward Fry, I install you as pastor at Messiah Lutheran Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord pour on you his Holy Spirit for the work committed to you, that you may faithfully proclaim the gospel in word and sacrament. At this time, we do something called the laying on of hands, which has a a connection to the scriptures, Acts 6, for instance, where after choosing trained leaders in the church, the apostles prayed for them and laid their hands on them. And that practice has continued in the Christian church, where we encourage a newly installed worker with promises from God's word and encouragements from different passages of scripture. So at this time... I invite forward called workers and other lay leaders. just like what I said before. This world looks at the ministry of the gospel and honestly says, what's that all about? The people in this world look at how important the message of Jesus Christ is to this congregation, scratches its head and wonders what's being accomplished. And I must humbly confess, even myself at times, as I think of people who work hard to build something, create something, really question and attempted to question what is this preaching and teaching accomplishing. It can't always be seen in this world. It definitely is not seen in its clarity in this world. But God reveals to us in Daniel chapter 12 the glory that it will be in eternity, the glory that is there of all those who hear the word of God, believe it, and those who take the word of God and share it with others. In Daniel chapter 12 we read, Those who are wise will shine like the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. God's blessing. Pastor Fry, receive this Lord's blessings from 2 Thessalonians 
1, 11 to 12, as you serve in this new call at Messiah Lutheran Church. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling, and that by his power, he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Ed, what a privilege and a blessing it is to once again be present for your installation as you begin the Lord's work here in, in, in Idaho in your personal ministry. Also a privilege and a blessing to bring the uh, encouragement of your extended family, as well as the leadership of our Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Again, we think of God's promise almost 3,000 years old as it's found in the inspired book of Isaiah. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Brother Fry, what a wonderful blessing it is to be here uh, at this wonderful day. And no doubt as you begin a, a, a new chapter of your service to the Lord and to his people, you are reminded of that privilege and the challenge that comes uh, with that public proclamation of the gospel. As you go about your work, remember, God has made a promise. Uh, he doesn't send you out empty-handed, but instead gives you the exact tools that you need in the gospel, in word, and in sacrament. And so as you go about that work, uh, take your comfort and your courage knowing uh, that God's word is always effective and always accomplishes what he desires. As you remember these words from Isaiah 55. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God bless your ministry. Pastor, may God's gift he has given you continue to be with you and strengthen you and strengthen this congregation. From 2 Timothy, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Brother Fry, welcome to Messiah. The Lord has called you through this congregation, but through the congregation, you have been called not just to pastor this congregation, but to also reach out to those who do not yet know you, as Pastor Mulkey mentioned. So as you go, go, especially with these words of Paul to Timothy. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. Blessings. Let us bow our heads and pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal and only Son of God, you sit at the right hand of the Father and give gifts to men, sending out pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ, the church, may be built up. We thank and praise you that you have provided this flock with another faithful shepherd. We ask you to grant your grace to both pastor and people 
that they may do what pleases you, holding on to faith and a good conscience. And finally, with all the elect, obtain eternal life. In your name we join to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Pastor Fry, go then, take up the work to which you have been called. The Lord bless you and make you a blessing to many, that you may bear fruit, and that your fruit may remain to eternal life. Congratulations. Thank you. Blessings to you. May you enjoy shepherding God's precious blood-bought people. Thank you, John. It is my privilege to tell you the rest of the story, if you will, uh, that was begun in John chapter 13. Here we turn to John chapter 21, where Jesus is having a discussion with his disciple Peter, who once was brassy and full of bravado, and is humbler and quieter. Words that pricked Peter's heart, but words that also filled him with an eternal source of comfort. And I can also relate to Peter. These words prick my heart. For as Peter, as an under-shepherd, I have failures and faults of my own. Yet I can rejoice with these words as with you, because Jesus reminds us of this eternal comfort. And you can say it with me. No matter what, the Lord is my shepherd. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and ever give you his peace. Amen.